This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat and Sean. Let's go. Hi, everybody. Uh, today was another show that we did in the absence of Nathan. He's uh, back tomorrow, everybody. But we had Tracy Vo from Channel 9 standing Hello. here. What did you think today, Trace? It was great. Out of 10? That red card game is really fun, actually. Yeah, it is, it's isn't it? It's a great drinking game. Yeah, it would sure. Be actually you can turn anything into a drinking game, though, can't you? <laughs> you sound like you've got a bit of a problem the more we I have. Know, she drinks oh, alcohol-free gin no, before having whiskey to get it to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Uh, just a Bible. It's fine. <laughs> um, Trace, earlier, actually, this morning, we talked about um, getting the age wrong of somebody. Mm. That yeah, was... that's right. Inspired by Simone Biles, where a flight attendant, she's the greatest gymnast that's ever walked this earth. She's 25 years old, and because she's only 4 foot 8, 142 centimetres, a flight attendant gave her a colouring book. <laughs> thinking, yeah, I know. thinking she was a primary school age child. What a classic. That's oh, a so good. Um, uh, there can be a bit of tension in relationships, and yes. some things bring that out more than others. Mm. Um, camping, for one, but we hear of a whole lot more, and you'll find out what really gets Tracy yes. Bow going too. Rolled up. Don't, don't mess with her <laughs> in this department. Plus, when kids think they've discovered something oh, yes, brand now. new, and it turns out, nah, that's been around a while. This is Nathan, Nat and Sean. Uh, before I left Exmouth, a couple of my uh, great mates um, turned up the day before I yes. left. And it was great. They weren't together at the time coming in a convoy, but I spoke to one of them, uh, Flinny, <laughs> and he said, oh, my mate Chris Maury is miles yes. ahead. <laughs> like he, he left a couple of hours ago, so he'll be there before me. Right. And I said, yeah, hopefully we can catch up. Anyway, Flinny gives me a call and he says, um, come around, have a beer. I've all set up. I'm ready to go. Mm. So I went over to the caravan park at RAC there up at Exmouth and my friend Paul, he, he, he'd set up properly. You know, you see campers who know what they're doing. Yep. So the the, the um, caravan's just perfectly lined. Yeah, rever- reversed up. in beautifully. Yeah, yes. it's just it's not a centimetre out of line. <laughs> um, the tents that his kids were sleeping yeah. in because they wanted to sleep outside, they're all done. Perfectly pitched. They were. And then all of a sudden, my other cr- friend, Maury, he, he walks over and you can just see someone who's just been through the absolute <laughs> wet ringer. Now, he's been there at the caravan park a couple of hours oh, before. Yeah, so, oh, yeah, no. okay. So, so obviously the, he's all set up too. Yeah, so he <laughs> comes over and he goes, uh, oh, I just thought I'd come over and say g'day. I can't stop for a beer. I've got too many things to, to do. But we end up convincing him and it's time to settle down and, and, and just have a beer with us, have a chat about what's going on. And he, he for the life of him, he couldn't get anything right trying oh. to set up his whole setup. His missus, his wife comes over, <gasps> Helen, who used to be a newsreader. Yeah, here. she used to work with us here, she yeah. She's lovely, Helen. And you could see that they're... She's a very calm person, Helen. Very calm. Mm. And he is too. But you could see together both of them <laughs> <laughs> must have had the biggest blues of all time because it's so hard doing that situation. In fact, after about, you know, uh, 10 or so minutes, Helen's like, we've got to go back and finish this thing before the daylight runs yes, out. Yes, because they've got kids as well that need What needed, was yeah. the issue? <laughs> There was Great question, <laughs> Tivo. And I think it's, this is the thing for a lot of people if you ever have a caravan. The annex doesn't just come out easily. There's mm-hmm. always these bits and pieces which you've got to adjust and then also um, having enough pegs and there's, you know, obviously yes. ties that go down to the ground. And they've got to be at the right angle as well. And, All of yep. it. So um, they, they look like they're... You know, they've been through the absolute ringer. So I said to me, hopefully, let's just go over there and, uh, and help watch. Me. Oh, oh no, sorry, help. No, help. Me. Okay. me and my missus were there. She said, what are you going to do? I mean, <laughs> I can't do anything. She we says what we're that. all thinking. <laughs> <laughs> but my mate Paul, he took over a drill. He drilled into the uh, earth and then put the pegs in there. Yeah. And, and he pulled the rope oh, wow. down. He did it in about Who five seconds. Who drill with them camping? Mate, I don't know this, but a lot of people do. Yep. Wow. Mm, this yep. is why I'm not a camper. So He saved the day because okay, this relationship yes. <laughs> was on the edge of on the just rocks. falling apart day one of their holiday. And I always see, and I think we've all seen people, if you've ever done camping <laughs> yes. with anybody or gone to a caravan park. Well, and, and also putting up tents. There's, you, yes. never, you can never find the right pole at the right time. You can never find the, enough tent pegs yes. or it's too hard to get them into the ground. There's a lot There's a lot of things that can go wrong. Or it's not set up properly and the weather turns. Yes, and, you know, you just, everything falls yeah, over. Yeah, everything falls over, blows away, yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm I always think if, if, if you ever want to split up from a partner, the one thing to do is go, go camping. camping. <laughs> well, I reckon that the way to ruin a relationship is, and this, my ex, I mean, I'm not saying this is why he's my ex, but the probably the biggest fight that I remember us having was putting together a piece of Ikea furniture. <laughs> it wasn't good. It wasn't good. It was just like there was, there was walkouts. There was tantrums. That is quite there was slamming that. of doors. <laughs> and I quite like putting it turns out I like putting IKEA furniture together as a solo exercise. As a team exercise, not so much. 
<laughs> yes. and like, and it was like there, there was a lot of angst about it. <laughs> what was the, what was the piece of furniture? It was like a, just a cupboard that had two doors and some shelves in it. It was a pretty by IKEA standards, a fairly elementary yes. number. Yes, it is. It is. Mm. I, I struggle following the numbers as well. I had a bit of an issue last night while we were just making a simple salad. Mine's a cooking <laughs> wow. thing. Wow. Look, and and, thing, yeah. and Liam, my Liam doesn't know this, <laughs> but I was watching him last night, even just you know wash, washing the, the lettuce and then. Oh, he was ripping, washing lettuce. He wrong. was washing le- the lettuce, but he was ripping it, tearing it into the bowl, and I was like, they're really big pieces. So I'll just leave him be. And then I was trying to mix the salad, and it was just the bowl was too small. But I kept calm. But I'm telling you this you? morning. Um, sorry. <laughs> yeah, you, you kept calm, but geez, you were seething under the I surface. Was, <laughs> I, I got my non-alcoholic gin because I'm trying yes. not to drink during the week. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yep. Don't worry, she has I'm, a whiskey I, to get I, to sleep. I, I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I walked away. <laughs> Travel stress can take a hike. With lots of fully refundable hotels, whatif.com has got you covered. Just remember, booking cancellation windows apply. So go on, relax and book your next trip with confidence at whatif.com. What if? It's Aussie for travel. We are talking about how to ruin a relationship. Inspired by um, Sean's friends who were basically having a complete relationship meltdown over setting up the camping equipment. And I know this so well. When I went up to Nalu and we did the same type of thing, it, I, I remember just swearing my box off. Yeah. And, I, and I reckon That's we got like there. That's not like you. You're normally <laughs> so level-headed. I lose the plot. And I remember we got there at the camping site probably about um, two, 2 in the afternoon mm. and me and my son Lachlan were trying to get um, this part of an annex on and it was dark. It was like 6.30 and I was just at my wits end. And I remember because we... We uh, borrowed it off a, a guy, and he said to me, Sean, it takes one stubby to put up this thing. That's how I measure the time. <laughs> one stubby, and you'll be done. Well, how many stubbies did you later, go through? <laughs> half a gut, five hours later. And that might have been the, the error in the end as to why you couldn't do it. It's a bit of a sign, isn't it? Longer and longer oh. after every stubby. <laughs> we want to know what ruins your relationship. Uh, Joe's in a Luca. Hello. Hi there. How are you? Good, Joe. Joe. What drives a wedge between you and your partner? Um, map reading and directions. Okay. Yeah. I, I I have absolutely no sense of direction and I can't read a map. Um, and um, this is going back a few years now, but my husband and I and our son were in France and we decided to go to Disneyland from the south of France. Yes. And we missed the turning to Disneyland and we ended up in Paris, centre of Paris. Oh, God. Uh, rush hour. On a Friday night, World Cup final weekend, when it was in Paris, <laughs> yeah, um, we got completely lost. My husband was so stressed, he was shouting at me, shouting at my son for being noisy in the back of the car. It took us about four hours to get to Disneyland from Paris. <laughs> and by the time we got there, my wedding ring was off and the map was rolled up ready to insert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a relationship. I mean, yeah. <laughs> driving in Paris at the best of times. Even Paris taxi drivers don't want to drive in Paris. It's awful. No, oh, it awful. was dreadful. It was dreadful. We oh. got so lost. Oh. And I just, yeah, and it was always a bane of contention. But now he, he still, he argues with the sat nav. Oh, okay. <laughs> so he's reasonable when it comes to but these I, things. I don't get involved now. That's nice thing. I don't get involved. <laughs> so, and you're oh, still so married, good. I take it? Still married? We're still married, yeah. Mm, still mm. together. It's hanging in there. Good on you, Joe. Thank Only you. because of sat now, though. And oh, yeah, that's <laughs> right. That's yeah, taking the pressure off you. That your marriage. <laughs> <laughs> we wouldn't be together if it, if it hadn't been invented. It's, it's just the threesome that Joe, her husband, and Tom Tom. <laughs> Thanks, Joe. Andrew's in Mount Helena. Hello. Hey, how are you going, guys? Good All right, Andrew. Andrew, how does your relationship get ruined? The folding of towels. Oh. <laughs> Bath towels. If they're not folded correctly and put into the cupboard so the nice, clean edge is facing out. It does my noggin in. Okay, so <laughs> does you're, the, you're the one who has the issue with it. Oh, 100%. Oh. When it comes to that sort of thing, I'm mildly OCD. Oh. <laughs> so what you're saying is you like the, the towel to be folded in thirds and then the, the nice, not the not the edges poking out, it's yes. got to be the fold that's like yes, the nice 100%. curve. 100%. Mm. So it looks all pretty and it's nice stacked yeah. up and it looks fantastic. If it's not done like that and you've got one out of place, I have to take them all out and put them all back in. Oh, are, you, oh, are you running Andrew. a day spa or something? Yeah. Like <laughs> no, but it's probably a good idea. <laughs> Do you, like, have a part-time job, a bed, bath and table (laughs) or something? What's going on? 
No, but I don't like going in there because when somebody takes them out and looks at them and puts them back in a mess, I don't like seeing it. I have to tidy it up. I always Petra, wonder about wow. that. that is, yeah, you that's have very strong feelings about yes. this, Andrew. I can hear it. So what about oh, folding a, a fitted yeah. sheet? How do you go with that? No, I don't. I have one fitted sheet and it gets washed and put straight back on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I can't fold them. <laughs> and, and so you certainly couldn't look at them in the cupboard, then, oh. if you can't fold them. No, no, 100%. So I have one. And when that gets worn out, I buy a new one. Yep. Oh. There we go. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. We are talking about what can drive a wedge in your relationship, how to ruin a relationship in one easy step, basically. Well, Claire's got some advice for us. Good morning, Claire. Hey, how you going? Mm, Good, thanks. What is it for you, Claire? What's the issue? Hand washing. Oh, <laughs> Okay, talk us through it. (laughs) Well, I've been married for over 20 years and the first thing I have to say every night when my husband comes home is, have you washed your hands? And in COVID, that really stresses me out because Mm, mm. he'll come home, he'll do a few things first and then he'll wash his hands and that's not how it's done. That's not how it's done. How's it supposed to be done? <laughs> so you expect yeah. him to wash his hands uh, the moment he walks in the door? Oh, okay. The moment you come in, you wash your hands and then you can touch things. So I follow him around with a can of Glen 20 because I'm just not happy with the way That's he washes romantic. his hands. That's mm. <laughs> um, romantic. This happens to me, Claire. This oh, how yeah, I live my life. of course, because <laughs> Megan's very hygienic, isn't yeah. she? she and, and I go, what are you talking about? I just walked in and she'll go, you've been shaking people's hands. I see you do it all the time. I go, yeah, yeah, and, and he'll... he'll He'll wash his hands and then he'll take something out of the fridge and he'll, he'll lick his fingers and then off he goes again and I have to follow him again. <laughs> like, you can't wash your hands and then lick them. And, and this man's yeah. been married to you for 20 years, Claire? Uh, over 20 years, yeah, I know. Has this been Maybe an issue time. every day in the 20 years? Yeah, well, yeah, because I'm, I'm a real clean freak. And oh, really? <laughs> um, <laughs> I never yeah, could have yeah, said something. <laughs> like, I'm just... I don't know. I don't wash my hands that often. I mean, I do wash my hands, but I'm not like the moment I walk in the no. door. I mean, I have, I, I I, mean, I understand Claire's sort of a little bit of it, but I wouldn't be sort of, yeah, walking Chasing around. Chasing around your partner. No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't. Oh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, spraying every part of his yeah, body. Yeah, that's, <laughs> it. that's it. You're clean now. Go off you go. <laughs> Nathan, Dad and Sean. Well, the news came out from the Perth Wildcats that John really will take over as the new coach as after ScoMo skid the wheels <laughs> during uh, family reasons. Uh, poor guy, actually, he had he had some stuff going on with um, he, he, one of his children that needed yeah, right. specialist treatment, and yeah. it was going to be an absolute um, uh, disaster, really, if they didn't have family support and everything. Yeah, else yeah, to yeah, and that, and that you can't deny that that's you know a very solid reason yeah um and also i just think the fact that his name was scott morrison was he was he was really behind the eight ball from when he arrived 100 percent that and you know yeah. what he probably had the he probably had the um the inability to connect with people like scomo at times yes. don't you don't you agree? i mean it's really hard when you've just been living your life being Scott Morrison in a different country and then you come here and all of a sudden people have already got an opinion about you just because of your name before you even do anything. Yeah. Just, that must be a very weird situation. <laughs> that, that would I feel sorry for him. <laughs> that would be, absolutely. Yeah. And then, of course, you know, you're coaching a team that's made the finals for the last 35 years and then they don't make the finals. That's kind of... That sucks a bit. Well, it's good news for John, really, because he's taken up this job. So John's background, he played, like, plus 400 games in the NBL. Yeah. He won a championship for the LA 36ers. And uh, he's over in Las Vegas at the moment just watching a bit of NBA. Um, um, d- uh, what is it? The uh, the young players are getting about Yeah, that's Summer moment. League of whatever summer they league, call it. Summer League, that's yep. what it is. Good, good call, Nat. <laughs> so this is what he had to say about the Wildcats. The reason I took this job is Perth Wildcats have 36 years of history where they've been pretty dominant. They oh, have. okay, right. Uh, does he know what happened last season? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is interesting. Yeah, I think, I mean, the only way is up, really, when the team yeah. gets out of the finals. But the Wildcats' strength, apart from good coaching in the past, has been their ability to be able to get the right play at the right yes. time. Great recruitment. Yeah, and they, and they necessarily, I mean, obviously they got Bryce, but I'm not sure if anyone thought Bryce Cotton was going to be the superstar he has been for yes. the Perth Wildcats. Before then, they've just got pieces of the puzzle like Nick Kay, yep. 
um, and, and a number of other tools that have come in and really had that impact where they've mm. been able to score 20 points, get a few rebounds. And then yeah, when they had, had John Mooney shooter. a couple of John uh, seasons ago, he was a terrific player, but we only had him for a season, you know? Yeah. yeah. So being able to replace those guys, I'm not sure what it looks like going forward. Mm. Mm. Um, that's a position that they probably struggled with last yeah. year. Yeah, I'd agree. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, and it's they all haven't about re-signed Vic Law yet? Is that true? No, I think he's been offered a lot of money for, to play mm. for other teams. So I'm not surprised. He, he's outstanding. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how the Perth Wildcats turn out this season. Yeah. They're, a, they're, only, they're in a sport where they need to win, otherwise they just fall back in the pile and no one really cares. Oh, that's a bit harsh. No, it's The fair. Red Army care. Yeah, the Red Army care, but yeah. but they kind of fall off the back. They're certainly not yeah. back page, but they just work their way yeah, down. Yeah, I see what you're saying. So they need to be successful. Uh, the other thing, it was a, a lay day in the Tour de France um, mm. last night. The whole peloton had to be tested for COVID because um, there has been a few scares. Apparently, they all got through scot free. Not mm. one person tested positive. Australian Ben O'Connor though had to pull out. He's pulled um, a butt muscle gnat, a gluteal. Yes, bugger. Can't be good. Can't no. be good at all. <laughs> And Australia got absolutely whipped in the um, second test against Sri Lanka. That's been played away. I was watching yesterday. So Nathan Lyon, our go-to spinner, he had one wicket for 160 runs On yesterday. On a Sri Lankan pitch. 160 runs he got belted for. That was only yesterday, let alone, um, sorry, what happened last night yeah. versus the day before. Well, so. To be honest, though, Sri Lanka as a country could mm. do with a win. They they're, in, they're in all sorts of trouble at they the moment, are, yeah, so yeah, let, the, let them have the palace, that. Aren't they, yes, at the moment. Yeah. You're listening to Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Spotted something on Twitter last night. Thanks, Twitter. Uh, Simone Biles, Sean. She is uh, the world's greatest gymnast. Now mm. she had a bit of a um, meltdown in the recent. She did at the Olympics. Olympics. Yeah, that's right. She she struggled. Expectations were so high on yeah, her that's because right. she's amazing. But she's still the most decorated gymnast in history. 100%. Extraordinary. Yes. She's on a flight the other day and she took a picture of herself <laughs> and said, not the flight attendant trying to give me a colouring book when I board. I said, no, I'm good. I'm 25. So she's 142 <laughs> centimetres. They thought she was a child. <laughs> giving her a colouring book. A genuine book. child, like a 10-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> They're trying to give her a colouring book. She's like, I'm the greatest gymnast of all time. She didn't say that, but she should have. Can you imagine? It, I know in America, if you're not a mainstream sport like NFL or baseball, mm. no one gives a rat's ass yes. about you. So Michael yes. Phelps has been a person who's been, you know. Just completely ignored. And, and he's like the greatest, greatest Olympian of all, of all time. And so is Simone. She's yes. the greatest. She's won so many gold medals. But she was given a gold <laughs> so <funny>. Imagine how <laughs> traumatising that. Imagine that poor flight attendant just starts going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, it's the best, isn't it? There are those people, though, you run into some time that look a hell of a lot older than yes. what they are. Like they've, yes. they've lived a life where they've run all the way. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, do you need, a, a, you know, do you have a seniors card? It's like, oh, I'm 38. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, like, oh, work in the sun, obviously. <laughs> I don't know. Nathan, Nat and Sean in podcast form. So Simone Biles was on a plane and their flight attendant. She's the greatest gymnast of all time, right? Yep. She's 25 years old. And the, because she's only four foot eight, tiny little pocket rocket, the flight attendant thought that she was a tiny child and offered her a colouring book. It's like, no, dude, I'm 25. (laughs) So we want to know if you've got the age of somebody very, very wrong. Mark's in Kenwick. Hello. Hi, how are you doing? Good, good Mark. Mark. Okay, what happened? Well, um, me me and my wife got married and we thought, oh, we'll go off to um, Disneyland for our honeymoon. Mm. So we went off to Disneyland Stayed in a beautiful resort. Um, we thought we're going to Disneyland uh, get to the Epcot Centre. Yes, um, where all the, all the different villages are. Yep. So we we took our bum bags, no no um, uh, identification because we didn't want to lose it. Yeah. Um, and then we got there, so we walking around with all the things, and we've gone to all all the villages that they've got over there. And every bar that we went into, she was um, well, she wasn't allowed to come in, or she she could go in, but she couldn't have a drink <laughs> because she looked under. She was twenty eight. And she looked under 21. Oh. So, I, so I had to go in the bar with her. I, I'd be drinking beer and she'd be just sitting having a Coke. And a <laughs> <laughs> I, bet, I bet she loved it too. Had a great time. Yeah, so oh, I guess, no. Mark, there's a positive when the first time you get asked for ID, when yes. you're 28, you're like, oh, God, I'm yes. so young. How I'm, great. Until you but can't you get can't a drink. But then you can't have a beer with your husband. <laughs> 
I know it was brilliant. It was brilliant. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're driving love. Let's go. I thought, you know, I thought you were going to say that everybody thought you were her dad, but it didn't get that bad, Mark. <laughs> No, everybody thought she was my mum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're super young. Yeah, super young. young. I get it. Good on you, Mark. Thank you. Hayden's in Kelmscott. Hello. G'day, guys. How are you going? Good, Good buddy. Hey. Did you get someone's age really wrong? Well, someone got my age really wrong, actually. Um, bit, bit of a backstory. I've, well, I've turned 30 next month, but I've been shaving my head uh, since probably at the end of last year because, uh, unfortunately, my, my gene pool for head hair is... Uh, doesn't favour me, so <laughs> I, thought, I thought I thought I'd stuff it or shave my head. Yes. Uh, recently had a new work colleague like start with us, and uh, I got mistaken for a forty-four-year-old. <laughs> How did that go? I down mean, it's a bit age? of a sting to the ego, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I thought the dagger slowly punctured my heart. So yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't nice. So what? Did, how did they like? How did that come up? I mean, because it's not like they just walk up to you and go, "You're 44." How did that? How did it come up in conversation? Oh, just uh, just a bit of banter, like like between between us both. You know, just sort of like, oh, you know, how old do you think I am, yeah. or how old do I think you are, and, and all the rest of it. And I. I I got her, her age pretty spot on, and yeah, she just uh, threw the dagger at me. So yeah, it wasn't uh, <laughs> wasn't a good experience. That, <laughs> <laughs> that brings you down to earth pretty quickly, doesn't, doesn't it? Doesn't it, just. Yeah. This is a podcast of Nathan, Nat, and Sean. Hey, TV, what we're talking about is the fact that Simone Biles, the yes, greatest no, I've, gymnast I've of all time. <laughs> Like, don't give it a colouring book. Now, you're one of those people that people would probably think you're anywhere between Super young, 13 well, and 22. Well, my legs 22. are swinging on Nathan's chair right now, so I could be a kid this morning. But, um, I, no, Sean, you were telling me about that your eldest son or your eldest child is 20. Yeah. And I was like, no. You know why, no? Because you thought I was super young. I know, exactly. You? Come exactly. on. <laughs> Stop flirting, you two. I'm right here. Um, Haley's in Cooper, love. Hello. <laughs> Hi, guys. How are you going? Great. Hi, Hi Hayley. Hayley. Okay, what happened? Okay, so mine was during the COVID times when we're having to wear masks everywhere we're going. So sure. my partner and I were like, yeah, let's go down to the bottle shop, get a bottle of wine. Um, it'll be sweet. I've been there a thousand times, never been ID. They, you know, didn't need it. They saw my face. Mm. Went in there with my mask, got the bottle, went to the bar, got the till, and the guy there was like, oh, sorry, like, can I can I check your ID? I was like, oh, like, I don't have it with me. I've been here a thousand times. You, you know me. So he must have looked at my eyes and be like, oh, she might look a bit, like she might be underage. You've just got really like, young looking <laughs> eyes. <laughs> young eyes. <laughs> well, apparently, I didn't know that's a thing, but apparently so. So I was like, all right, well, can I just show you my face? And maybe if you're 100% wanting to come to get it, then I will. I literally took my mask down and within a split second, I was like, yep, never mind. You're all good. That was the same thing. <laughs> okay. I, my partner just stood there staring at me. So apparently, like, my lower half of my face just doesn't it's match super, my oh, eyes. It's super old. <laughs> yeah, so you've got Honestly, old lady I mouth, like, now, but, but child eyes. <laughs> I now have, a, like, an old, like, a complex, I think. I'm like, what do my eyes look like in comparison to my lower half? So, oh, well, I, yeah, think, I think we know the answer, Hayley. Yes, <laughs> honestly, like, might have to go to, like, absolute cosmetic anytime <laughs> soon. <laughs> exactly. That's all you want. Don't worry. Oh, That's hard to reconcile, isn't I it? I know. Isn't it just? Yeah, it's a bit shocking. Yeah. It's the immediacy with which you're like, oh, no, don't oh, worry yeah, about no. it. Yes. Oh, God, look at your mouth. Oh, no, don't worry about it. <laughs> Thanks, Hales. Uh, Angela, hello. Hi, how are you? Good, Angela. Hi, Angela. Okay, what happened? Um, well, my mum is turning 90 in January, so this story goes back about 20 years. Yeah. So the, detail, the details might be a little bit sketchy, but I think um, what I recall is that we were at a restaurant and mum wanted a senior's discount to get something, and she was 70 at the time, and they asked her for her senior's card because they didn't believe she was over 60. Oh, oh I mean, that, that's, that's a great outcome, yes. isn't it? You'd almost just go, I'm prepared to pay yes, extra. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah, forget the discount, so, I'll take the compliment. <laughs> yeah, Angela, she was so, so good. happy, and she was just, like, cracking up, and, yeah, I couldn't believe it. It was great. She's living her best <laughs> life. Yeah. Yeah, having and a great time. 20 years, I think, because, yeah, she's doing well, does her line dancing, you know, two times a week now. It's a bit of ass. boot scooting wow. keeps you young, does it? <laughs> that's the answer. But it's getting in compliments. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Angela, mm. my grandma, she went to 101, and Grandma Mac used to, uh, even at 100, she'd jump on the exercise bike. Like, Yeah, no so joke. she rode her, ex- she went to church every day and yeah. rode her exercise bike every Unbelievable. day, didn't she? Unbelievable, yep. And, and, and the funny thing I always remember with my grandma, the best thing was that if she would ring you for your birthday, you know, you sometimes you you ring oldies and then they talk forever. Yes. All the time. Yes. You can't get them off the phone. Mm. On a landline. It, yeah. It'd, be, it'd <laughs> be the other way around. She had no time to speak to me. Oh, oh I've got to go. See ya. Oh. Well, Sean, how many grandkids did you have? <laughs> well, 30-something, 36 yeah. or something. She had, she had a few to get through. <laughs> she was busy. <laughs> 
kept her busy. <laughs> oh, thanks, Ange. Charlie's in Byford. Hello. Hello. All right, Italia. Charlie. Did somebody get your age wrong? They did. I actually went in to go buy a lottery ticket the other week and they asked me for my ID because apparently you have to be over 16 years of age. How I'm old? 23. Italia. Oh. Over 16. <laughs> They, thought, they literally thought you were a child. They thought I was a child. Do you get colouring in books on the airplanes as well? <laughs> Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. Sometimes we get sent things and you go, you know what, that's a little piece of magic. There right. is a visual that goes with this that we'll have to put up on our socials. Um, Sean, I know that you've, you've, you're familiar with what this is because it's from your TV <laughs> show, uh, your little footy show, yeah. uh, where they threw back to you um, on a Basil's footy show from much, much earlier in your career when there was a little bit of a telethon oh, thing going God, on. Nat. Let's have a listen to this. Uh, at Linter Gas, along with the club, are running a w- winter woolies competition, and for, they're encouraging everyone to bring along their uh, unwanted woolen gears to uh, help with the needy people. Brilliant, the Salvation how, how, Army. How well you train him up, Hattie? Got both the sponsors in there. Look, he's very, very polished, isn't he? <laughs> so that was—was was that your first year? It, w- it must have been. First I was—I was wearing. I hadn't. I couldn't remember that at all. The hair is extraordinary. The, hair, the hair's amazing. God. I just wanted to put my fingers through your hair. Oh, oh I didn't want God. to touch it. <laughs> I was just like Maybe amazing. with gloves on. <laughs> <laughs> what about what I was wearing? I know. Did I know. see what I was wearing? Oh. Oh. I, uh, so I've kept that. There's a tartan tie that I'm wearing. Oh. Maybe with a tartan shirt. That was, that was the club, that was the the club tie, though. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was made by uh, Dot Allen, um, Ben's mum. Yeah. She came up with the pattern. And uh, <laughs> we, so we had a tartan, he kept everything a tartan in, shirt in the house back then. So good. Oh, my Lord. And the hair just finished it off. Can we just hear him talk again? Because <laughs> he just sounds yes. so earnest. Yes, yes. Yeah, yes, just get, yeah, getting your, <laughs> yeah, a lint of gas weird. credit Were through. Were you a bit nervous? So you're trying to get the sponsors out of there. And also puberty. Puberty <laughs> <laughs> hadn't hit yet. Let's have another listen. Uh, at Linter Gas, along with the club, are running a w- winter woolies competition. <laughs> and for, they're encouraging everyone to bring along their uh, unwanted woolen gear. To uh, help with the needy people. Brilliant. The uh, Salvation uh, Army. How well you train him up, Hattie? Got both the sponsors in there. Yeah. Look, he's very, very polished, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know about that. Nobody in the world five. would have thought That's that you would right. have a media career after that. Oh, no. <laughs> Absolutely. So I'm good. No, Does you're it bring back fond memories or <laughs> traumatic memories. memories? Oh, no, I don't remember being on the show at all. Oh. Actually, I was talking to... Uh, uh, <laughs> Oh, well, no, you got, you got hit in the head a lot, about, Trey, so yeah, you yeah. got to factor that in. <laughs> but the early days were good because we got all the free gear and I was wearing that horrible stuff that um, <laughs> now we're doing a retro round and people like to see yeah, that stuff right. coming exactly. out. Yeah, that's right, exactly. Oh, my yes. Lord. I know, it's a tartan tie. Don't yeah. knock it. I mean, purple, It'll be worth green. something that these days, I reckon. Oh, oh, look, oh, we're looking at it now. Just look oh, at your no, hair, no, Sean. That is horrific. They're encouraging everyone to bring along their unwanted woolen gears. To uh, help with the needy people. Brilliant. The uh, Salvation uh, Army. How well you train him, Matt Paddy? Got both the sponsors <laughs> in there. Hell, that Look, he's very, very polished, isn't he? It was that season I went the ponytail for a couple of yeah. years. Mm. But you know what? Your ha- the hairstyle's coming back these days, I reckon. That was truly it. We'll put it up on our socials so you can see what yeah, we're talking about. That them. wasn't good. It was not, even at the time, there's no way that people went, oh, no, his hair is amazing. Oh, I didn't mind. It looked I dirty. I good wash. Yeah, I'm with you now. It did look, it did look like I needed a good wash. Uh, it looked like you just dragged yourself out of the ocean, to oh, be honest. So it's kind of, yeah, well. a little bit crusty. Oh, yeah. Well, it would have been. It would have been a Sunday because the show would have been on a Sunday. Yeah, yeah. So it would have been hurting at some stage. Yeah. <laughs> you put in some fine time at the big house tonight, oh, people. Sure. Sean podcast. Sean, having kids, they're quite opinionated, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't have any. <laughs> Would that be fair? <laughs> that is a fair. They're smarter than you, obviously. And they like to think that they know everything and you know nothing. Is that is that a fair assumption? They've broken everything that's, uh, yeah, anything's to come to light. It's because they've seen it first and mm-hmm. they know what's going on yeah. and you're behind yeah. the times. And you've and got no idea. Matter. Yeah, that's right. Because you're old. 100%. Um, <laughs> I present some evidence well, of no, this. I think I... <laughs> Charles Firth, who's one of the chaser guys, um, wrote, uh, on a road trip with my 11-year-old, he introduced me to a musician he's discovered that he thinks has a lot of potential. A lot of potential? Who would this be? That musician's name, David Bowie. (laughs) 11, and he's discovered David. Does David Bowie know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so, so this so kid is informing his dad of David Bowie's potential. 
I wonder how it came up as well. Yeah, it's like, like, hey, he's Dad. Got, yeah. This, this guy's got this potential. This guy, yeah. You're going to, yeah, yeah. you know, even he's you might like him, star. Dad. <laughs> One that day. So I mean, weird. got some bad news for you. He's <laughs> not around anymore. Yeah, I know. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to be able to see him yeah, in concert, 11 year old kids. I wonder kids. where he came across that. I know. And said, I've got something. Well, there'd be I'm kids that, before anyone else. that think that about Kate Bush, too. Because oh, yes. she's, she's, you know, his number one hit now from, from Stranger Things. It's like, no, no. It's, it's recycled. Yes. She's been around, yes. all right. And it's been remade and remade and remade. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> kids. Kids. You know, well, nothing. They know, they know, they know everything. Nothing. Yep. <laughs> oh, they know everything. This is Nathan, Matt, and Sean. Charles Firth, he's one of the chaser boys, actually. He, uh, his 11-year-old, uh, they're on a road trip and he's started explaining to his dad about this new artist that had a lot of potential that he thought was really great and it was David <laughs> Bowie. And so the dad's just like, are you, are you serious? <laughs> That's brilliant. I can imagine <laughs> being told that about this up-and-coming artist and it's David Bowie. Uh, no, the but, arrogance of you. It's amazing. And we've been talking about, obviously, with Stranger Things and Kate Bush yes. and her song being in everybody's yes. uh, yeah. forefront at the moment. Oh, yeah, it's ridiculous. Um, Jody's in Beach, bro. Morning, Jodes. Oh, morning, crew. How are you? Hey, Jodes. Good. Thanks. Uh, all right, Jody. So, uh, have you have you got kids that tell you stuff that reckon they're breaking news for you? <laughs> yes, I can remember a few years ago. Um, I've got two girls, and they came. Oh, the oldest one came home and was uh, going on about this great song that she'd just heard, and it was by One Direction. And I thought, oh, yeah, okay. You know, she said, Mum, you have to listen to it. And she played it to me, and it was One Direction singing One Way or Another. <laughs> one uh, Way or Another. <laughs> correct. <laughs> right. Yeah. Bless, I mean, bless oh, their little hearts. They yeah. don't know. Oh, but it's like, yeah, it's an no. original. Yeah, we've, not, uh, not quite, we've, we've all been through it. Yes, yeah. I think so, oh. yeah. <laughs> It's a bit deflating for them when they discover that mum knew that song years ago, isn't it, Jodie? It was. I, I actually ended up playing it to them by Blondie. Yes. So, and how did yeah. they feel about that? Uh, it didn't worry them, actually. They liked both versions. Yeah. So oh, yeah. Okay. It was a win-win. I mean, it was a classic. Great. Yeah. Great. It too. was a classic. Yeah. Uh, thanks for bringing so it back memories. into our into our yes. <laughs> front of mind. Good on, Jodes. Uh, Jackie's in Palmyra. Palmyra. Hello. Hello. Hey, Hi, Jackie. Jackie. Have you got kids that reckon they know stuff as well? I have. I've got a nine-year-old and she came home saying, oh, mum, there's this awesome song out and got this great beat. And it was about a year or, a year or so ago. And it ended up being the Boney M Rasputin. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jackie. And I was like, oh, yeah, no, no, I've, I'm here, this one. <laughs> no, no, so, I'm I haven't. familiar. <laughs> No, you haven't. Yeah, it's just come out. I, yeah, yeah. Like, how would you have had it, Mum? You. <laughs> you know, I started singing along and, you know, I was like, actually, Rasputin's actually like a real person and, there's, you know, this is a real story. Oh, you made it educational <laughs> for her. Way to ruin yeah. that moment. Hey, <laughs> 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 you forever. The Nathan, Nat and Sean podcast. I mean, I know I've heart- barely mentioned it, but I went to Italy on my own. <laughs> Oh, look, it's like I'm back there. Pass me the gelati. Um, so when you wake up this morning, it was four degrees and you've come from 41 oh, degrees. What were you thinking? Yeah, it wasn't It wasn't easy, Sean, I'll be honest. Um, but I had that whole hour of being wide awake <laughs> to think about it um, while I was away. You know when you're on your – because I was on Instagram a bit and people, people encouraged me to post things and then I posted a lot of things and after a while people were like, that's a lot of things. Settle down. But um, it, you know how when you're on Instagram it sends you targeted ads? Yes. And it's like it's like it's been listening to you. <laughs> what are yours? They were all about sore feet. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was getting all these ones for this equipment that you can buy to the, where you do exercises to help your sore feet. I was getting all these ones for the world's most comfortable walking shoe. I'm like, what does it know? Does it get, can it tell that I'm limping? Because I didn't think I was physically complaining about a lot, like out loud. I get that it listens. This phone, yeah. But how did it know that I had sore feet? That is amazing, actually. Maybe I don't know. I've can it? Does maybe it che- was che- it was teeing into my in to, to my Fitbit and, yeah. and it saw that I was doing like Do eighteen thousand steps a day. I don't know. I don't know what it's capable of, Sean. Do you know what mine is at the moment? It has been for a while. I get all these um, things of back lower back pain, <laughs> and, well, and, and it's just all this stretching <laughs> you can do. I'm not kidding you. That doesn't surprise me at all, Sean, <laughs> given that all you do is stretching. Is it, is it giving you anything new? 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, people are doing all kinds of bizarre stretches. Mm, but um, mm. yeah, no, no, I'm coming up Trump's at the moment after I started Pilates again. Fuck. I'm on. Absolutely. <laughs> He's on. He's on, everybody. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Nathan, Dad and Sean. Well, news just in this morning that David Noble, the North Melbourne football coach, has been sacked. He will stand aside. Lee Adams, who played 100 games for North Melbourne, will take over. Only He's 100. Assistant. He only played 100. And he will take over immediately. So David has had uh, a coaching career at North the last three seasons where they've won five games out of 32. I mean... Oh, oh. oh old Jones, what, what are your thoughts on that? <laughs> what do you think about that, Tebo? Well, as I mean, a that's probably better than what the West Coast are doing this season, so, you know. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, no, West Coast because they're under, under oh, West they, Coast. They, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> which, you know, which means that Adam Simpson's going to be in the hot seat probably next year, yeah. you would think, going yeah. forward. But as it stands, David Noble will no longer catch, coach the North Melbourne football team. So they, they um, had a review or they've had a review over the last month to look mm. into their football department and 99% <laughs> of the time as soon as they open a review. Yes, it's always a coach though. What about like list managers and things like that? Because clearly there's been some... Like, because they, they had the big clean sweep a few years ago when they got rid of, you know, Boomer Harvey and those sorts of players. Yes. They, and they had a clean out and that was supposed to be their, you know, chance to mm. refresh and renew and rebuild. And it's amounted to nothing. So somebody's got to be responsible for that as well, surely. Yeah, I always find that the – so the club goes down on a slide and then someone, you know, comes in and takes over – and I always find that the that first person who's in to help rebuild or looking to rebuild is is the next person to go. Yeah, it always yeah. seems to be two. So the coach slides them down the hill, he gets the ass, then the next person comes in, gets the ass, and then Then the one after that yeah, is, seems a, to is be a hero. To, yeah. Which is them. it just timing then? I think a lot to do with timing. Yeah. But also, you know, um, I, I don't know, philosophies and development of coaches every year, I'd imagine, is getting better and better. So they have a different way of doing things. Um, you see the the success Collingwood are having this year. Yeah. Um, certainly Fremantle with Justin mm. taking the reins and stuff like that. Maybe new but ideas also, from new, younger people. it's also the people, people, like the scaffolding they've got around them as well when they bring these new people, right, to try yeah. and get that structure Yes. You know, in place and – but, I mean, do you think there's going to be more to, to go for this one? Uh, maybe not necessarily this year because Stewie Jew was the other one who was looking like he'd get the axe um, at Gold Coast, but they've signed him on for a couple of years. So I think the next coach will be under pressure will be, no doubt to me, Adam Simpson next mm. year. No mm. doubt. So one gone this year. Whether To be um, fair, if you are saying that he's under massive pressure, that's good news for him because last year you said that Simon Goodwin would be the first coach to be I sacked close, last mate. season. <laughs> I was close. And what happened, Sean? <laughs> Melbourne won the flag, Sean. <laughs> so great news, Adam Simpson. Right, behind the scenes, things were happening. I'm telling you. <laughs> that is true. That is true. But ultimately, it turned out quite well for them. Oh, they had an absolute blind and proved the wrong, so there we go. Not for the first time, Trace. More great McManus schools. Nathan, Nat and Sean is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcasts.com.au.